Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pace Studios. We're live now with Lula Wiles. Thank you for being here, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for having us. We're yeah. Glad yeah. Hello, Internet. <laughs> we are happy that you've made this part of your uh, what sounds like an awesome New York trip so far. Yeah. For sure. We always have so much fun in New York. Maybe too much fun. <laughs> good. Good. <Yeah. laughs> I am having plenty of fun right now, and I'm yeah. stoked that Excellent. you guys are here making this even more fun. Sound check has sounded great, and can't wait to share it with uh, the internet. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to do first? Yeah. So we're going to play a song that is on our brand new record that's out January 25th. Um, the record's called What Will We Do? Um, and this <clears throat> first song is called Hometown. And I wrote it uh, about my hometown, mine and Molly's hometown, Farmington, Maine. And we all grew up in rural Maine, and so this is kind of our love song to rural Maine. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, can we talk a little bit about the recording process of the album and how oh, yeah. soundingly pretty similar it is to what's going on here today, right? I know you worked in uh, your Boston-based band and yeah. uh, you recorded in Boston and uh, in maybe somewhat of a similar setup to this, right? Yeah. Yeah. There were carpets. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up setting up, uh, we recorded the record at Dimension Sound Studios um, co and it was co-produced with us and... Um, our engineer and co-producer, Dan Cardinal. Uh, but primarily the way the album was recorded was, you know, all in a live room. Um, 
just you know singing together and playing together because we feel like that in a lot of ways is the way we get our best band energy and our kind of our best musical energy yeah and i think most of our favorite recordings that we like to listen to are also at least they sound very live yeah right <laughs> it's sometimes hard to tell but uh yeah we uh we brought a lot of lamps into the live room in the studio, um, you know, like draped some fabric over the lamps. We really like wanted to create our our studio vibe. Totally, yeah. Tapestry never ever hurts a vibe ever. Yeah, is exactly. this is this the mic? Is this always the mic? Uh, no, we we don't record using this mic, but we always perform with this mic. Um, it's made by a company called Ear Trumpet Labs out of Portland, Oregon. They make great mics. Yeah, but in the studio, we were all individually mic'd uh, vocally, except a couple of tunes. We Two of the songs, our song Morphine and our song What Will We Do, it's, which is a traditional song and the title track, um, we recorded that just around one mic and with no, you know, no headphones, no monitors, just like hearing ourselves in the room together and kind of mixing it on our own, right? Yeah. Um, and I think one of the important things about the way we recorded is that we had a idea, a very clear vision of how we wanted the record to sound. And um, we felt like the subject matter was would be reflected and most you know accurately and also like where we are as a band most accurately of like having a really organic sounding album and something that um, feels really real and not too polished. Um, yeah. Uh, it needs polish. Yeah. I don't know, which is a kind of, I've never thought about this way, but it's also like the way the world feels right now. Like it's kind of rough. So yeah. you know, <laughs> leave, but, leave some of the rough edges intact. Yeah. Something that's real. Yeah. yeah totally. Well, it sounds great what you're doing here in this room today. So thanks, thanks. for sharing it with us. And can yeah. you tell us, is the second one you're going to do also off of what will we do? Or is this one of the, uh, the, the one unreleased one we're doing today? <laughs> this is also on what will we do? Um, it's one of the, non-political songs. I call it my trite love song. Um, it's actually an anti-love song about Nashville. It's called Nashville, man. And there's a comma. <laughs> When we were in the studio, we had this big whiteboard with like the names of all the songs and like checking off if we'd like gotten everything done for it. And eventually we just started like messing with all the song titles and seeing if we could like make some kind of pun out of them and so we added a comma to nashville man and then we just thought it was funny and decided to keep it is there any sort of grammatical way to uh to notate like uh yeah exactly. nashville. nashville man and, oh it's terrible i'm actually moving to nashville and these guys hate it so i don't even know if they'll like come visit me or like speak to me once i move there We'll see. We'll see uh, if I we hope can. So. I think you could hopefully change our opinions. Of yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyone watching in Nashville, this one's for you. <laughs> oh boy. Or is it? <laughs> I'm pounding the pavement, waiting on a stationary letter from a Nashville man. It's the weight that I'm running from as fast as I can. Tops and sweet deals. No messages, no packages, no postcards telling me how he feels. And what could be better than the Tennessee weather and a man alone? How about the two of us together? We can talk without a letter or a telephone. I'm bound in the pavement, waiting on a stationary letter from a national man. It's a waiting that I'm running from as fast as I can.
that's awesome. That's super upbeat for a song with a comma. <laughs> right? <I love> <laughs> right. Um, can we talk a little bit about what the songwriting process looks like when when you got when you went into the studio for what will we do? Was it pretty much road tested and you had the songs together, or did you? No. <laughs> was it a, a it was studio <laughs> creation and sort of does everybody bring stuff to the table? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is our second album, um, and on the first album, it was very much like songs that we had been playing live for a long time and songs that we'd all written individually but for what will we do we sort of completely abandoned that approach um and we did a lot more co-writing um and we did most of the songs are uh ones that like one one band member started and it is primarily theirs but um we did a lot of a lot of collaborating and we went on some writing retreats um which for me were often i often refer to them as crying retreats um because <laughs> writing songs is hard um and we're you know we're big into feelings in this band we um realized sort of at the beginning of my senior year in college that we had to record an album right yeah. was it my senior year i forget yeah we but... realized basically that we had six months until we needed to record an album or else we'd have to wait like two years. Yeah. yeah. So we gave ourselves six months to write all the songs. Um, um, some of which we had already, you know, started and, and things, but um, it did sort of feel like recording this album snuck up on us a little bit, yeah. but I'm, you know, I wouldn't change the way we did it. Like I think it, the process ended up um, creating some like kind of urgency or whatever. Yeah, and totally. we ended up writing songs that were really relevant uh, to the time, you know. And, and I think a lot of our songs really connect to each other because mm -hmm. we, we were writing them together, we were talking about them together, and so I think little bits and pieces of our songs kind of ended up um, showing up in other places. And as far as the arrangements for the record, a lot of that was done in the studio, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, is, it can be kind of stressful when you're paying for studio time and you're trying to figure out, like, how does the song go? <laughs> but you end up getting this really cool kind of organic spontaneous energy where like the thing that's on the record is like the second time we ever played the song that way yeah um and these sort of spur of the moment decisions become like the definitive version of that song yeah and then we listen back to it now and we're like oh yeah is that really what i played on that cool mm -hmm. <laughs> well can you tell us a bit about the the third song you're gonna play yeah, yeah so this song is called independence day um and it's actually one of the one of the older songs on the new record, I'd been kind of messing with this one for a while before I brought it to the band and it uh, it sort of, it took me a long time to write. I started writing it and then kind of waited six months and then worked on it some more and then waited another six months and then finally finished it. Um, but I feel like sometimes that's how long it takes to, to get a song right and we, uh, we had a lot of fun doing the, um, the vocal arranging for this song. I obviously love love singing with these ladies, so here's Independence Day. <clears throat> I might feel better I knew we would last forever 
with me in its undertow. I'll lean into the wind and let it blow. And letting myself miss you still feels better than somehow letting go. So tell my mama that I'm coming. Hopefully, people who are watching right now on uh, on YouTube and on Facebook are at least uh, Northeast people and Midwest people are able to check you out in the upcoming. You've got dates announced all the way through March, including you're back here in New York at yeah. at Rockwood on on March 28th yeah. at Rockwood yeah. Music Hall. And there's a ton of dates announced across mm -hmm. everywhere in the Midwest and the and the Northeast and Canadian dates as well. Yeah, we've got um, so we're playing in Toronto um, in late February and. Uh, but then we're doing a whole tour of Southern Manitoba, which seems random. Uh, but there's this great uh, house concert tour um, called Home Roots. Um, so we're playing around Winnipeg and lots of those places. And uh, we have our bo amazing booking agent, Molly Farr, to thank, who's here. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. Um, yeah, we're super excited for that tour. And uh, we'll have our we'll have a drummer with us. Um, a lot of, like, half the record um, has drums and... Um, so we're pretty excited to have our, you know, our bestie drummer Sean Trishka with us. Because um, a, a couple of the songs we haven't been playing yet live because they're so kind of like drum centric. Um, so we're excited to like work those up and have those be part of the set. Yeah. Nice. So is this uh, the fourth song you're going to play? Is this, this one is the unreleased one? This is not yes, on, this off is the album? the world premiere. <laughs> We've played it live, but it's, uh, it's never been you know, fixed in a uh, recorded medium until now. Oh, well, thanks um, for doing it here. Yeah, we're, we're glad we're to excited. be there. Yeah. Um, can I tell them about this song, oh, Ellie? tell them. Yeah. So Ellie wrote this song, um, and the title comes from a real text message that she did send, uh, and the song is called, It's Cool, We're Cool, Everything's Cool. <laughs> Did it all turn out that way in reality after that text was sent? <laughs> what did you say? No, it did not. It did not turn out that way. Um, this song is I don't know, maybe about. It's cool at this point. <laughs> no, I think it's kind of cool at this point. But this song is sort of about um, a topic that uh, I think we all we all relate to in our songwriting and in our lives in general. Um, the uh, age-old song topic of lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's rage it. Let's rage it, <laughs> ladies. Um, thank you so much for having us here, you guys. Yeah. It's been so fun. And thanks to, you know, if there's anyone watching, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and we have been and will continue to be Lula Wiles. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
All right, that was great. Lula Wiles, thank you all for being here. Issa, Ellie, Molly, thank you so much for coming by and thank travel you. safely on all of the uh, throughout 2019. Hopefully we see you back here yeah. in this room. It's a standing offer next time you're here and it makes awesome. sense for you guys to come see through. Uh, so best much. of luck on What Will We Do? It's out on Smithsonian Folkways on January 25th. January 25th. You can pre-order it now. See you there. <laughs>